what is good youtube and welcome back to a brand new video and today we're back man the utah jazz they have been the biggest surprise so far this season no one would have saw this coming Lori marketing is officially him so today instead of the usual jazz rebuild where we trade marketing trade conley trade all the veterans away and go full rebuild mode and tank for web and yama we're gonna go the opposite way we're gonna build around Lori marketing in today's utah jazz rebuild with the way he's been playing maybe he just develops into that guy that we always thought he maybe could have in chicago so today we are doing a Lori marketing utah jazz rebuild before we get into today's video make sure you guys drop a like on this one of course subscribe if you're new to the channel as always greatly appreciate it on the road to 30,000 subs the goal is to reach it before the end of this year uh, honestly, could it could be possible, could not be possible. It's, you know, it's a bar we have to set high. But regardless, the Utah Jazz, like I said, Laurie Marketing has been amazing since he's gotten in Utah. Some people are probably not surprised by this. Some people may be surprised by it just because Laurie Marketing always had potential to be really good. Jim Boylan, back in Chicago, probably ruined him a little bit. He obviously went to Cleveland and had some good opportunities, but he was more of like the fourth or third option there. So now you have marketing in a role in Utah where he's kind of the number one guy here. So let's build around him. Who needs Webb and Yama when you already have Lori marketing, right? Who needs him? So today that's what we're going to do. We are going to build around Lori marketing. I thought it'd be fun. That would be a little cool concept with the way the Jazz are playing right now. Because uh, last time I did a Jazz rebuild, I treated everybody, obviously. I went, you know, full Webb and Yama mode. But now we're not doing that today. We're going to actually try to make the playoffs. And we have a ton of assets to make this team even better. That's the beautiful part about this all. So... What we're going to do is we're going to simulate through the rest of the season. Right now, the Jazz are 10-3. and three. Well, let's see what 2K thinks about this roster. Will it sustain that way? Maybe we saw the trade deadline to make some trades. I'm still wondering if the Jazz plan on trading like Clarkson, who's been really good, obviously. Conley, who's been fine enough. You still have Sexton. But, I mean, if I could trade these two guys, I will. But I don't know what the Jazz plan on doing in real life. You know, Conley has a team option. So, we could, like, accept it and then trade him. But I don't know if anybody's really signing up to trade for Mike Conley. Who knows? We'll see. We're going to submit to the end of the season, or I will stop at the trade deadline and make a couple trades just because we do have some guys on them expiring contracts that could be valuable to other teams. But at the same time, we're doing good. So maybe we want to keep them around. We'll see how we, uh, you know, we'll see how things are going. You see this, man? This could be you right here. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get more out of the game you're watching. You're picking overs or unders on your favorite players that you love watching each and every day. Let me show you how it works. Prize Picks is available on mobile or desktop, and you basically get to choose two to five players, and you choose over or under on their props that they give you. You pretty much have every sport you can imagine on here. Uh, but let's say I wanted to go ahead and put a bet on Mitchell and Joel Embiid. I want to go more and more on them. If I get it right, I three times my money. Let's say I want to go up to five players, which is the most you can go up to. You can go uh, more or more on all of them. And that's going to 10 times your money. I started with $100 and so far I'm up to 500. I've been uh, having a ton of fun over here on Prize Picks. If you want to go ahead and sign up, link is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHABLES or imagine deposit dollar for dollar up to $100. If you deposit $100, you get $200 to work with. Thank you, Prize Picks, for sponsoring today's video. Back to the rebuild. So we are indeed stopping the trade deadline because 2K did not trust this roster going forward. We have fallen off a cliff, and maybe that's what happens to the Jazz in real life. But man, are they playing some good basketball so far. But yeah, I am going to go ahead and start here at the trade deadline, trading Jordan Clarkson away. So I don't want to take on too much sour. Usually I wouldn't care because obviously, like I said, we're just going to be tanking, kind of going for Web and Yama, but we're not doing that today. So what I want to do is try to put myself in a good position to make trades later on. So we have like uh, the magic offer me Jonathan Isaac, which is cool. That could be interesting. We get them, uh, you know, Jordan Clarkson, they give us Jonathan Isaac. But I kind of like this trade a lot because Berton's contract is expiring next year because that last year is non-guaranteed. And we get a first round pick out of the Dallas Mavericks. So we could use this expiring contract and Berton's maybe trade for somebody else. So we're going to make this first trade happen where we send Jordan Clarkson over to the Dallas Mavericks to give Luka Doncic some more help over there in Dallas. Maybe he's the Jalen Brunson replacement. Who knows? So now you have Mike Conley at 35 years old. I don't know who's ready to trade for Mike Conley, but we do have a 24-year-old Sexton who I want, kind of want to develop next to Markkanen, which I think would be really cool. And then Walker Kessler has been really impressive this year so far as well. THT. Like, there's a lot to be excited about here. And then it, whether or not you want to keep everybody here... You can always just trade them later on. Or we could use Mike Conley's expiring with some assets in the offseason and make a trade. Who knows? There's just like a ton of possibilities here. So I will see if there's a good offer for Mike Conley. Again, I don't know what his trade value would be in real life. Not sure anybody's technically signing up to trade for Mike Conley. Maybe the Nets were if they really were getting rid of Kyrie or something. I don't know. That just seems too crazy to me. So the Pistons, probably not. Maybe if they had Blake Griffin or Andre Drummond still, that could have been interesting a long time ago, but now it doesn't make any sense. So 
I think that'll be the only trade we make. I think we trade Clarkson. We feel good about that. Malik Beasley is maybe somebody else you could look to trade away. Maybe get like a first round pick for him. So we could try this real quick. Then other than that, I think we'll be good. So we got Malik Monk in a second. Uh, we got Aaron Gordon in a second. I don't want to take that contract on anyway. So no one's offering me a first round pick. So I think we're just going to chill with all the, you know, with what we got right now. We traded Clarkson. That's what matters. So now that will uh, change the rotation a little bit. So Markin is still going to be the small forward. You have Venerbelt, Kessler still, Sexton, six man, and Conley. So is your start. And then Rudy Gay, THT, and Abaji. So that is your 10 man rotation. We're going to keep simulating right now. We're 21 and 35. So like I said, we did in fact fall off a cliff, but that's okay. It's all right. We still have Laurie Marketing, and that's what matters. So Luka Doncic, as always, wins MVP. Paul Bonchero is the Rookie of the Year. John Wall, Giannis Defense Player, Cade Cunningham, and then Joe, Joe Mazzula is your Coach of the Year. Luka, James Harden, and Giannis LeBron. Do we get like a marketing appearance here? Probably not, but it would be cool if he did make it. But regardless, we did not make the playoffs. I don't think we made the play-in either. I think that with the way the Jazz are playing right now, they're at least a play-in team. Colin Sexton averaged 17. Hopefully, he can develop uh, really nicely as well because... I mean, technically, you have Markin and Sexton on, like, steals of contracts right now where both these guys could develop into something for you. And Sexton wasn't even the full-time starter yet. So, if he could develop into something really nicely for us and him and Markin could be kind of your duo and you could add two or, you know, three more players to this roster, could be really interesting. So, we're not in the play-in, like I said. So, it's going to simulate the playoffs. And uh, the Timberwolves didn't even get in the playoffs. So, that's going to be another lottery pick for us, which, uh, you know, right now is not totally out of the realm of possibility. Still a little early, I guess you can say, but the Timberwolves are not playing up to par so far. The 76ers being the Clippers in six. Retirement's got Carmelo, Udonis Howes, and Dwight Howard. Going straight to the lottery because this is going to be an important lottery for us. So, yes, I want to compete and uh, win a championship uh, sooner rather than later, but the lottery is going to help out that process, of course. So we are projected uh, Minnesota's pick. We're also projected our pick. So this is a huge lottery for us. Number 14 you have the Houston Rockets who uh, stay at 14. So I don't know. Do we get lucky at 13 with the Timberwolves pick and jumps up to top four? Probably not, but that would be kind of cool. And no, it's going to stay at thir or 13, I should say. So we have two lottery picks at the very least, which is really nice. Whether you sign, trade for some players or draft a couple of players, there's a lot to be excited about with this Jazz roster right now. They put themselves in a really good position, Danny Ainge did. Kings jumped up to top four. Kings and Nuggets, oh. I don't even know if there's a point of watching the rest of this. So we fell all the way to seven. Yeah, I figured as soon as that happened, I was like, yeah, we're done for. So Philadelphia, the 30th pick as well for us. I think that's from the Royce O'Neal trade, if I'm not mistaken, because the Nets had Philadelphia's first round pick. So we have three picks in this draft, which is really nice to have and a lot of avenues to explore with this. So let's go straight to staff signing. So we have uh, Will Hardy we need to bring back. I mean, the man has just been fantastic. So Will Hardy, let's bring you back. Let's bring you on as our head coach to stay. Post D coach will fill this out real quick and then we can get into draft night where honestly I'll probably just draft I don't think I'll make a trade with these picks I think it's better to just draft a couple of guys we might be able to have like a Thompson twin fall to us and they could continue to develop for us so yeah feeling pretty good about that we're gonna add three rookies here whether they're part of the team long term or just trade you know traded later on a lot to be excited about let's jump into the draft and let's draft our guys so just have three draft picks, if I'm not mistaken. Let me make sure that uh, that way. Well, never mind. I guess I'll figure it out here. So number seven is going to be our first pick. We have Cam Whitmore on the board. You have Amon Thompson. So like I said, we could take the Thompson, one of the Thompson twins. Brendan Miller, Jared Walsh, Gregory Jackson always does good and sometimes wins rookie of the year. I think I will take Thompson here. Amon Thompson here, whether he's playing shooting guard or small forward for us. And our other pick, you got Derek Lively, who is at least a good backup center going forward. You also have Kel Ware. Anthony Black could be something for us. So I think I will take Derek Lively with this other pick. He could back up Walker Kessler or whoever is our center going forward. And for our last pick, we can take like Chris Murray here. And that'll be good. So that is going to be our draft. So three guys that may contribute right away, who may not contribute, we'll see. Amon Thompson, Derek Lively, and Chris Murray. Like all those picks. Player options. Mike Conley, I'm actually going to accept. Uh, Malik Beasley. Well, do I want to accept Mike Conley? I don't. I don't think I want to accept it, actually. Malik Beasley. I think I do want to accept it. Kelly and then I could probably let go. And then uh, THT declined his. So, yeah, we're fine with that. Qualifying offers, none. Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Actually, no, we have one in Nikhil Alexander-Walker. And obviously, I think we would almost have money to sign a free agent. But I don't think I'll do anything crazy like that. Uh, you got, uh, that is not Mikel Bridges. So that was Mikel Bridges. You got Miles Turner, Fred Van Vliet, uh, Deandre Russell. So, it'll be d -Lo to Utah. Don't really want to do that. Okay, look at the roster as of, you know, right now. You have Sexton, Amon Thompson. You have Malik Beasley, Oshai Abaji. You have Laurie Markkinen and Leandro Barmero, Vanderbilt, Davis Bertans, and then you got Walker Kessler and Derek Lively. So right now, 
I think the position I would want to upgrade the most is probably the shooting guard spot. I like Malik Beasley, but if we could throw Ble Beasley's contract and Berton's contract together and use some of our you know rookies or future draft picks, we could definitely get somebody here right now to help us out a ton. And I don't know who it's going to be just yet, but if we can take a look around the league and maybe just go for it, let's do it, man. It's something you don't expect the Jazz to do, but we're in a position where I think it might be a decent idea. So I want to make a trade right now, and there's not a ton of things that make sense, but there is one thing that I kind of like the idea of, and then we're going to go to the Denver Nuggets right now. So the Denver Nuggets just went 35 and 47, which I obviously don't expect to happen in real life, but we're living in the 2K world right now. And if you look at that third dot, it says this team is willing to trade Michael Porter Jr. He's 25 years old, fits the same timeline as Markkanen and Sexton. So he could be kind of that third option where we are taking on his big contract. But he may not be that hard to get just because it looks like the Nuggets are willing to give him up. So yeah, I'm going to try to do this trade. I'm going to try to pull off Michael Porter Jr. from the Denver Nuggets. I think that would be the best thing to go for. So Michael Porter making about $33 million. He has a long-term contract. He just shot 42% from three. Honestly, it could be really amazing either at the power forward or small forward spot for this roster. So obviously the biggest concern is his injury history, but we can, uh, you know, kind of live with that here in the 2K world. So we'd be giving them Davis Breton's expiring contract. So they'd be getting out of Michael Porter Jr.'s contract entirely. I could give them Simone, I guess. Uh, obviously this isn't going to get it done, but uh, we can have maybe this unprotected Cavs pick and uh, maybe like uh, a Timberwolves pick in the future. 2027 Timberwolves pick for Michael Porter Jr., they want two more first round picks, one from Dallas and one from Minnesota. Not sure I love the idea of that. Let's say we throw in, let's say we throw in Chris Murray instead. Maybe one of our rookies uh, who only has one star trade value. They want one more first and I give them a second. So I'm giving them three first round picks, Chris Murray from Michael Porter Jr. I'm not sure I'm in love with it. But I think it'll work out for us. Um, maybe I can get rid of one of these first and throw in like one more player, maybe like a Yudoka Azabuki, and then we call it a deal. Nope, they don't want to do that. So probably gonna have to do that for or Malik Beasley in a first round pick. They give me KCP in return. Um, interesting, but no, I'm not. I'm good on that. Uh, let's say so. Like I said, this was the original offer. They want a first and a second. They'll give me Lado Kinkar. So I guess we're getting up three first round picks. One from the Clarkson trade, and then one obviously from, you know, one from each trade being Mitchell and Gobert. And we're going for Michael Porter Jr. I'm going to do it. We're going to do it. I said I wanted to go for it. I wanted to make a move. So Michael Porter Jr., one of you guys going to have to move to power forward, which uh, we'll move Markin in there. So Markin is going to be the power forward. Porter will be the small forward. So now you have Sexton, Thompson, which we could move Thompson to shooting guard technically, and he can, like, develop into a really good shooting guard for us. He even goes up to a 79 at small forward. But we'll, we'll leave him at shooting guard for now. So it'll be... Sexton Thompson, and you have uh, Malik Beasley still here, of course, as well. Abaji, and then you'll have, which we can maybe move Abaji to the three, and he'll go up like crazy, maybe. So Abaji goes up one, so we can move him to the small forward. Then you have Thompson, Malik Beasley, Colin Sexton at the point guard, Abaji, Michael Porter, uh, Mark and Jared Vanderbilt, and then you'll have Walker Kessler and Derek Lively. I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. So there's really nothing else I want to do in free agency for now. Uh, we are going to have to resign, like I said, Laurie Mark next year, I believe. So that'll be a thing, but that's okay. So our biggest acquisition was Michael Porter Jr. Hopefully he can develop like crazy for us, but I think I'm going to be good on free agency. Uh, so let's see what we got going on here. So we got Laurie Marketing, who didn't move up at all. Michael Porter, 84. Colin Sexton's moving up, which is good. Vanderbilt, 80. Malik Beasley and then Baji is moving up. So guys are developing, which is nice. I wanted Markin to develop a little bit more. Uh, I tried to make his numbers where he would. Did we even look at player stats for this season? I totally forgot to do that, didn't I? He averaged 20, or did I? 20, no, I think I did. 23 and 17, and then 16 for Michael Porter. So hopefully Porter can step it up a little bit again next year. But man, I'm liking this roster. Maybe we turn around here real quick, but there's a lot to be excited about. Lucas, your back-to-back -back MVP. Webb and Yama, of course, wins Rook of the Year. Baisley is your sixth man, Joel be defense player. Baisley most approved as well. Doc Rivers, Coach of the Year, and Jameson is your executive. On be your first team, you got Luca, Trey Young. I'm going to imagine we don't have any like jazz representatives here or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, not a bad year by any means as we got the 60 in the Western Conference with the core we have now. So if you take a look at the player stats and see how it went for us. We had uh, 21 from Marketing, 21 from Michael Porter, and then 20 from Colin Sexton. That's kind of your big three. It's a little unorthodox, but I kind of like it. Baji with 12 off the bench. You had 11 from Lake Beasley, 9 from Walker Kessler, 9 from Amon Thompson, and then 4 from Jared Venable, and then 4 from Derek Lively. So not too bad. Obviously, we got some guys that are going to continue to develop for us. And then there's still some moves to be made if we want to get even more aggressive. So we get the Pelicans in round one, which, by the way, my Blazers, without Damian Lillard, Shaden Sharp, and Nurkic, went out there and beat the Pelicans last night. 
and held them to 95 points. A fully healthy Pelicans team. That's impressive if you ask me. Regardless, game one, uh, we're down 1-0. Game two, we even it up. 131 and 119. Michael Porter with 30 in that game. Game three, they win. Game four, we win. Okay, we're pushing them to the limit. Game five, we win. Can we win game six? Game seven, can we win? We cannot. Damn. Okay, we pushed the Pelicans to seven, though. That's still exciting. That's still really exciting, though, that we pushed the Pelicans to seven. 25 and six in that closeout game. League Beasley with 20. Unfortunately, we could not get it done. We have the Pelicans going to the finals. So I guess we pushed the team that went to the finals to seven. They go to lose the championship to the 76ers who have back-to-back -back championships. Now, LeBron James is fish retiring. Chris Paul is retiring as well. Al Horford is. And so is Batum and Lou Williams. Straight to the lottery we go. Let's see what we have going on here. So we might still have a lottery pick from somebody. Or we probably just traded a pick that maybe was a lottery pick. I don't know. Looks like the Timberwolves actually had their pick this year. So I don't think we have a lottery pick here. So looking at it, I don't... Yeah, I don't think we have a pick at all in this draft. It's looking like. Uh, unless if I just don't see my name just yet. Uh, yeah, the Thunder have it. So the Thunder have our pick this year, I guess. And the Bulls have won the 2024 draft lottery. So no draft picks in this draft for us, which is fine. And our coach staff's completely filled out. So we don't have to worry about that, which is nice. To draft night we go, just to be sure. I'm pretty sure, though, we do not have a draft pick at all. Didn't see my name once. Yeah, so we don't have a draft pick at all in this draft. Um, we have Amon Thompson. There's nothing I want to do here. We're just going to go straight past rookie signing, go to player options. So options you got, marketing. I'm going to accept Vlado and Zabaji, Kessler, Bomero, and then Kinkar. Qualifying offers, Yudoka Azabuki. I tried to throw you in the trade for Michael Porter. I know. I apologize, but I uh, might want you back. Jared Vanderbilt wants $15 million per year. Lee Beasley wants $13 million per year. And then Yudoka Azabuki wants $8 million per year. So do we have money to, like, sign anyone crazy here? So we have, like, a money for, like, a Cole Anthony, a Devin Vassell, which I kind of like. We have a money for a Tobias Harris, an OG and Anobi, a Josh Hart, a Bull Bull, if we want Bull Bull, Kevin Love, Kuzma, Jared Venable, which we kind of saw earlier, uh, Grant Williams. So a lot to like here. But if we look at their starting five or rotation right now, it's Sexton. It's going to be Thompson once he develops a little bit more. Abaji is still going to be our backup small forward. Uh, and then we have Walker Kessler as our starting center, which I don't know how much I could trust him to continue to develop. I don't know how much he'll go up in overall. Um, so what I want to do is, well, I can't sound like an Anthony Davis or anything like that. What are the centers that we have available to us? We have Jonas Valanciunas, Isaiah Stewart, Anyeka, Ankongwu, Mohamed Bamba, Nick Claxton. So there is Zeke Naji. I kind of like the idea of Bamo Bamba unrestricted. $10 million per year who can shoot some threes and play defense. Give me a Mo Bamba. That gives about $20 million still to work with. I'll give Mo Bamba a three-year deal to be my starting center in Utah. Or with Kessler continues to stake over that role depending on how much he develops. And then we could get like a Cole Anthony who wants like $20 million per year. That could be really nice actually. Wouldn't be too bad to have a Cole Anthony on this roster. Uh, DeSumo's here. How much did Cole Anthony average last year? He was restricted. But we gave him like $20 million per year straight up. The Magic have already offered him a contract. So it looks like they would match it if I tried. But Sell, also very interesting. Clay Thompson's out here, which I don't want Clay Thompson. Tobias Harris. I mean, I feel like, you know, free agents don't usually go to Utah, but we've established a culture that I think some people can get behind. We'll have, probably have to renounce Vanderbilt, of course, and then we'll have to renounce also Malik Beasley. But if Vassell would be really cool, that would keep Thompson on the bench. That'd be Vassell at the starting shooting guard spot next to what we already have. And then Mobamba could be interesting. I'll give him an offer. Why not? We'll give Vassell an offer. I'll give him $20 million over to, uh, $20 million four years. Vassell is going to agree. Uh, do we get Mobamba to agree? We can't uh, unless we renounce, which we... So it looks like we'd have to give Mobamba a little bit less money, which I think I can live with. So Devin Vassell is coming to the Utah Jazz. Which is really nice, actually. And then Mo Bamba, if we could still get him, which it looks like we might not be, might not be able to. Uh, we'd probably like a little bit off. Isaiah Hardenstein also is pretty solid as well. Um, let me see. Center is available. Well, let's go with centers. Is Mo Bamba still here? He is. So I think we can give him an offer. Yeah, we can. So it's just a little bit under what we originally offered him. So Mo Bamba, we could sign you and then have Devin Vassell as well. That gives us a lot of versatility. And we still have money to sign Malik Beasley. And is it going to give me Vanderbilt back as well? No. I can still sign Malik Beasley back, though. I think we do it. Why not? Let's give Malik Beasley a contract. Have him come off the bench for us. And that'll be great. And then we still have money to sign like Caruso or Kyle Anderson. So Sexton, you got Vassell now, Malik Beasley, Amon Thompson. You have Abaji. You have Markkinen. And then you have Mo Bamba and Walker Kessler. And then Derek Lively. So liking this a lot. I actually do like this. I want to see what player progression is like just to kind of see where we're at as far as who's progressing and who's not. 
So if guys aren't progressing, then they can maybe go out. So Markin ends up to an 85. So it's pretty clear to me that Markin isn't going to go up higher than what we you know could have expected. Michael Porter's an 84. So these guys have stopped developing, which is a little disappointing. But sells an 82. Abaji. So I'm not sure how much we do with this core right now because guys aren't progressing like I would have wanted. But Sexton, Vassell, Thompson, Malik Beasley. Uh, so I think what we do is we probably move Malik Beasley or Thompson to the backup point guard spot or just a backup guard in general. So Sexton, Thompson would go down, which he was originally a bigger. Beasley's not really a point guard, but he's just going to kind of play that role, I guess. So Malik Beasley be a backup point guard, Thompson, Abaji, and Markin, and then you have Lively and Kessler and Mo Bamba. So I won't be hesitant to maybe make a trade the trade deadline if that's what we need to push this team over the top, but... I like what we've thrown together so far. It's an interesting roster. I don't know if this 2K algorithm is ever going to give this team a championship, but you know, it's possible. We'll see. So right now we're currently 31 and 25 on the season. I am at the trade deadline to try to push this team over the top. Now it's not going to be easy to do so, but I kind of have a guy in mind that I think could be interesting. Now, when I do this trade, we're getting in the realm of unrealistic as hell. I'm not going to lie to you because I don't see why this would happen in real life. But since we're just kind of having some fun today a little bit, might go out of the realm of a little bit here. So I kind of like the idea of bringing a Chet Holmgren. Like I said, the Thunder rebuilding right now. Obviously, the Thunder have always loved their draft picks, and we have a ton of those. I would love to get Chet Holmgren to be my starting center. I really would. I like what Walker Kessler is doing, but obviously, Chet Holmgren is an 87 overall compared to what we have right now. So, yeah, I'm going to try to bark down that window or, you know, go down that door, whatever you want to call it. I don't know why I'm saying it like that. But Mo Bamba for Chet Holmgren, obviously with some draft picks, I think could really push this team over the top. So this Minnesota pick that we have is very valuable right now. Obviously, our pick probably isn't. The cast pick isn't. But if we threw like Derek Lively in the trade as well, that might, you know, interest them, pique their interest. And then you have maybe they give me Lindy Waters, I guess. So let's say we did something like this. Uh, two first round picks. Uh, Lenny Waters declines his no trade clause. Okay, nice. Um, do we have buyer? Why does Waters have a no trade clause? Give me Foster, I guess. Then I don't know. Yeah, so that's probably not going to work out. Okay, what if I threw in another first round pick? They don't agree just yet. This is me going for it. 2029. Okay, let's remove Lively and let's just do it for these picks. Nope. Okay, and I'll give you a Cavaliers first. They do agree. So just like that. We throw all of our assets out the window to bring in Chet Holmgren to be our new starting center. Next, Lori Markin and Michael Porter Jr. Vassell, Colin Sexton, Thompson, and Baji. And then you got Walker Kessler and Malik Beasley. And don't get me wrong, Walker Kessler is playing well. He's having two blocks per game. But imagine another guy who could uh, rim protect in Chet Holmgren and then score as well. Which uh, I don't even know how many blocks Chet Holmgren is averaging right now. But if you have Kessler and Chet Holmgren as your two guys, no who are your shot protectors, both averaging two blocks, or rim protectors, I should say. That's looking pretty good to me. We brought in Chet Holmgren. It's time to celebrate the rest of the season. So we once again did make the playoffs, but this time only as a 60 in the Western Conference, which obviously is really disappointing, but you had 21 from Michael Porter, 20 from Marketing, and then 20 from Chet Holmgren, 75 from Sexton. Like I said, I don't know if the 2K algorithm is ever going to give this team a reward by, you know, giving them a championship, just because this team doesn't have any flashy stars, I would say. If we don't have, we don't have a... Luka Doncic or Apollo Boncaro or Jokic, but we'll see, man. You know, team collectiveness matters too. So let's see what, you know, we don't have John Morant either. So would not be surprised at all if we get eliminated here very early on. We get to play the Grizzlies, which our team stacks up pretty well, I would say. Like, you know, we have decent overalls compared to their roster, but just don't really know how this is going to go. So we'll see. Game one, uh, we're down 1-0, lose by 4. 51 from John Morant, which... Not ideal game two. We do even it up, beat them by one, 34 and 14 and 13 from Moran, but 35 and 10 from Michael Porter Jr. Game three, two to one. Game four, they're up three to one. And I think we're seeing firsthand on how this is going. It's just a bunch of guys thrown together that 2K don't like, man. It's just the way it is. We're not even getting player progression out of them. So can we win game six and force them to a game seven? Probably not, but oh, wait, maybe, maybe. Never know. Can we do it? We do. Okay, we beat them by one point. We get a game seven in Memphis. I mean, if we find a way to beat them here, you know, anything's possible. So I'm going to go down to an eight man rotation just to get my best chance possible. And I'll kick Beasley out of the rotation, I guess. Game seven in Memphis to try to get to the second round. Let's see if we can do it. Jump on top of them in the first quarter. If we can keep that up, that's going to be really awesome. But they're trying to come back on us. Can we keep this up? Well, it looks like we got it. I think we got it, man. We do beat the Grizzlies in game seven. Let's go. John Moran, Jaron Jackson, not enough. Michael Porter drops 31. So 
Now I get to play the Kings. Now the Kings do have Victor Webb Benyama. So we used to have Chris Murray. Obviously don't have him anymore. And they got Desmond Bain. That's really nice for them. So now they have Keegan Murray, Joe Val, and Webb and Yama playing power forward center next to each other. This is a good Kings roster. Very good. Uh, Desmond Bain with Jared Fox is nasty. Just, yeah, this is going to be tough. This is going to be a tough matchup. But you got Webb and Yama versus Chet, which is kind of entertaining. So we'll see how this goes. Game one, we are up 1-0, though. Good start. Desmond Bain drops 34. It did not matter. 25, 22, 21. Game two, we're up 2-0 so far, which is honestly shocking uh three to zero do we sweep the kings no way they're about to come back aren't they yeah they're about to make us both threes no we beat them in six okay i thought for sure we were about to blow a three to zero lead here but now we get the houston rockets yeah we got chris middleton jalen duran nick smith jr kevin porter jr jalen green jabari of course so i mean we just beat that king's team so i won't rule anything out because that king's team was looking really good on paper our roster is really good too don't get me wrong but I don't know. Game one, 133 to 119, 28 from Jalen Green, 23, 23, 18. And look at these guys. Every single player in the rotation was in double digits. That is a team effort if I've ever seen one. Two to zero. Three to zero. Do we beat the Rockets? Oh my goodness. We're in the finals and we get to play Donovan Mitchell and the Cavaliers. What a way to end this video. Obviously, the Cavs are a tough get. They're tough to beat. I don't know how much I like my chances here. We get Donovan Mitchell versus his former team, Lori Markinen Revenge Tour here as well. Sexton Revenge Tour. I need Sexton and Markinen to go out there and get this job done. Game one, up one to zero. 133 to 98. We are 113, I should say. Game two, two to zero. Beat them by 20. 32 and 13. 33 for Markinen. The Revenge Tour is here for Markinen. Three to zero. Do we beat the Cavs in four? Beat them in five. Come on, baby. Let's go. Wow. Let's freaking go. Chet Holmgren is your Finals MVP, 22 and 15. I think that Chet Holmgren trade obviously pushed us over the top. We would have loved to have seen Markin get the Finals MVP, but you know what? I will take that. This was a fun rebuild. This was fun. This was fun. I'm not gonna lie. Markin, he, he didn't he didn't go up in overall like I would have wanted him to. I think uh, eventually 2K has to give him his props. But man, uh, down in the comment section below, boys, let me know what you think about this Jazz right. What the Jazz are doing right now? Do you think this is sustainable? Is Markkanen here to stay? Is Markkanen a all-star that we should expect to see going forward? Because he's only 25 still. So is this going to stay for Markkanen? Let me know down in the comments section. Thank you guys for watching. This is Crushables. I'm saying peace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.